Hello, John Zimmerman with tabletclass.com, and this is just a quick little mini lesson on the distributor property. Now, uh, for those of you who haven't heard of the distributor property, you pretty much start learning it, oh, I guess somewhere around a long, uh, somewhere when you're around in middle school, okay? But you definitely start using it when you're in pre-algebra and beyond. So those of you in an algebra course or so, you <laughs> even if you don't know what the property is, trust me, you've been using it, and it's really a, a, such a powerful property that you really need to you know, have a full grasp of it. So let's take a look at uh, the distributor property here. The distributor property has to do with multiplication, and it's basically another way to approach a multiplication problem. That's all the distributor property is. So if I asked you to figure out what 8 times 36 is, you know, you would go ahead and get your calculator out or a piece of paper and pencil and you figure it out, and, you know, you would give me the answer to 88. Okay, no big deal. It's pretty easy. Well, the distributor property allows us to do the same problem but in a little bit different manner. Okay, what it says is this I have 8 times 36. If I can rewrite this number here, 36, or whatever I'm multiplying by, okay, as a sum or difference of two other numbers, I can, I can approach this problem differently. So watch this. I'm going to go 8 times 36, but I'm not going to write 36 as the number 36. I'm going to write it this way 8 times 30 plus 6. Okay, so remember, I'm approaching this multiplication problem in a different manner. So I have 8 times the number 36, but I'm writing it as 30 plus 6. Now I can write this in all different kind of combinations, or, and it could be the sum or difference of two numbers. So this is, no, this is only one possibility to write the number 36 this way. Okay, now once I have uh, this kind of setup here, where I have this number, 36 for example, written as a sum or difference of two different numbers, now I can distribute. And if you think of this word distribute or distributive, you can kind of think of the word distribution, which kind of means like pass out to multiple things, or, you know, I guess that's the way I kind of think of it. And that's basically what we're going to do. We're going to take this 8 and we're going to distribute it to both the 30 and to the 6. So 8 times 30, or 8 times 3 is 24, so 8 times 30 is 240. And I'm going to add that to 8 times 6. Okay, I'm going to distribute it, that 8 over to the 6, and that's 48. And guess what? 240 plus 48, that's really easy to add up. That is simply 288. Okay, so we got the same answer, but we did it in a different manner. Okay, we used the distributor property. So super, really, just critically important in um, mathematics. Let's take a quick uh, look at how it's used in algebra. So those of you out there that are in pre-algebra or so, or, you know, um, could look at this problem and recognize how, what to do here. Here I have 3, and I'm going to multiply it by the sum x plus 2. Okay, so you, if you remember, what you're going to do, you're going to take that 3, and you're going to distribute it to the x, so that gives me 3x, and then you're going to add it to 3 times 2, which is 6. Okay, but we can do this in algebra. The reason why we can do this is precisely because of the distributor property. Okay, all right, so hope you uh, learned something, and hopefully this cleared up the distributor property for you. If you need to learn more mathematics, of course, I invite you to tabletclass.com. All right, have a great day. Bye-bye.